How do you reconcile? Well, first of all, uh, what, what has happened here is that the, the judges on appeal have uh, disagreed with the approach taken by the trial court in relation to the issue of direct or indirect intent. Um, and what, what has happened basically is that the, the court has rejected the, the finding of the, of the lower court that Mr. Pistorius actually lacked the indirect intent. In other words, he, should, he was able to foresee that by shooting four times at the toilet door, uh, whoever was behind that door would have been killed as a result of his actions. Mm -hmm. You would recall that the trial judge had found that because she had accepted the evidence that Riva was not behind the, uh, the, 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 the bathroom door, the, the toilet door, and was in the bedroom, she had accepted Oscar's evidence in that regard. She then found that it was not re reasonably foreseeable for him uh, to uh, uh, um, assume that she was behind the, the, the toilet door. And the, the, the appeals judges have, have disagreed with that, saying that the concept of dolus eventualis, which is indirect intent, it was clear that he could foresee that by shooting four times at that door, regardless of the height that he, he adopted, whoever was behind that door would have been fatally wounded and perhaps even killed. Now, what would happen is that they've now um, rejected, they've quashed the conviction for culpable homicide, which was imposed by the lower court, uh, and have replaced that with a conviction for murder. What they've then done is that they've remitted the matter back to the trial court to decide the question of sentencing. Um, and that, that's where we are. So Oscar basically would go back to the trial court and Judge Masifa will then um, sentence him to the new uh, um, charge of murder. Which, which could be a 15-year sentence. Now, very quickly, what sort of precedent does this set? Because as Betty said, I mean, there's really nothing previous to go by. This has never really happened in South Africa. Well, the precedent that it sets basically is, is, is that judges have to be mindful um, of errors of law. This clearly was an appeal based on uh, a misdirection, an alleged misdirection by the, by the lower court as to how to apply the legal principle of dolus directus or dolus eventualis. Mm. And in this case, um, prosecutors and judges, as it were, would, would have to be mindful of the proper application of this very complex principle of foreseeability yeah. uh, as, as it apl applies in, in the principle of uh, dolus eventualis. Charles Adiego Phillips, thank you for joining us. A limited time, but thank you for joining us on the program. Thank you for having me. Well, still ahead on Network Africa, Somalia is going the extra mile to increase female participation in the country's justice system. We'll have that in a moment. Please stay with us. Watching Network Africa here on Channel's Television, a two-day workshop organized by the United Nations Assistance Mission in Somalia for female officers from the Somali Custodial Corps has been concluded. The workshop aimed at addressing the lack of representation and participation of women in the justice and security sectors. It was all focused on the challenges female officers face in a male-dominated profession and participants. Female officers from the Somali Custodian Corps attend a two-day workshop to focus on the challenges female officers face in a male-dominated profession, and participants agree to create a national network for female officers to help them address those challenges. Resolutions from the workshop to be incorporated in the strategic document of the Encore Plan that seeks to restructure the judicial system in order to meet the demands of the federal state. The Uncut Plan is currently being drafted and shall establish a structure for raw custodian corps in Somalia. The chief of the custodian corps, General Bashir Mohamed Jama, 
stresses the importance of a functional prison service to the delivery of justice in the country and the rehabilitation of convicted offenders before their reintegration into the society. One of the custodian officers, Corporal Rukia Yusuf Abdiadin, says she's been taught resilience as a coping mechanism in a male-dominated environment. We came here to take part in the training with officers from Gal Casio, Baidao, Gal Mudong, Kismayo, Juhar, in order to help and support our motherland. I will share with my colleagues what I have learned in the hope that they too will benefit. Mitch Dufresin, the acting director of the Rule of Law and Security Institutions Group of the United Nations Assistance Mission in Somalia, encourages members of the Female Custodian Corps to network and set goals that would enable them to assume decision-making roles at work. Corrections is part of the justice chain, so policing, justice, and corrections together as the first building block in establishing rule of law. Corrections is fundamental to security and peace in Somalia, and particularly women in corrections. We need women in the custodial corps to make it a modern and professional service. Halima Ismail Ibrahim, chairperson of the National Independent Electoral Commission, summarizes the challenges facing corrections personnel and acknowledges the difficult working conditions facing officers in the region. Major Gashando Fadumo Osman, who has served in the Somali police force since 1972, is one of the mentors at the workshop. She advises the female custodian corps members to balance their work and personal lives. So here's our question for the day here on Network Africa. What do you make of President Mahmoud Buhari's request of funding for infrastructural projects from China? Tell us what you think by sending your response and comments uh, to Network Africa at channelstv.com. You can also reach me at amarachi underscore ubani. Thanks for watching. I am Amarachi Ubani. See you next time.